What's up Dragon Nation? I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Space Engineers Technical Series. This is the uh, series where I go through some of the stuff that uh, Space Engineers has to offer. The different tools and items that you could use to build really creative machines and uh, this episode we need to go over connectors and merge blocks. Last episode we went over pistons and I'm trying to go through all the steps that I needed to build my tunnel boring machine. So today is connectors and merch blocks. Let's get this started. All right, so everything I have set up here is to help me tell you guys what you could do with connectors and merge blocks. Uh, this is the system that I'm trying to build right now. Uh, we're gonna go through step by step. I think next episode we'll probably go through projectors Maybe Not sure. We'll have to figure that one out But today we're going over merge blocks and connectors a few things you need to keep in mind Well, let's go over the basics now the thing that merge blocks and connectors are is They're used to connect one grid to another, but they do it in two different ways uh, the connector I would call a soft dock or a soft connection and the merge block I would call a hard connection now the reason for this is the merge block will actually merge to <coughs> two grids together while the connector will just keep them separate it will still connect them and allow you to pass resources through but they won't actually be the same grid with the merge block they will be another thing you need to keep in mind is let's see if I can go ahead and get one down the connector has an access point that means you could pass resources through it and of course I wasn't ready for the merge block now if you look at the bottom of a merge block you will notice that there is no access port which means you cannot pass items through a merge block now, of course, there are all mods on the Steam Workshop that kind of combine the two, so that way you have a merge block that you can pass items through. But for vanilla game, we're going to go ahead and go through those. Uh, another thing you need to keep in mind is small grids and large grids. So this is a large grid connector or large grid merge block. This is a small grid merge block. Now, if you look at them, you'll notice they don't really match up in size. That's because those two cannot be connected together. Let's go ahead and go into third person and I'll show you that they will not actually connect. Now if we go into the connector, we have a large grid connector and then we have a small grid connector. So if we go third person, you'll see that we can actually connect them together. And that if we hit P, we could actually lock the connector and now resources can pass from one connector to the other. There's also another thing you need to keep in mind. A lot of people, well, just about everybody, they hate using P in order to lock a connector. So if we go into G, we find the connector. Where are you connector? There you are. We bring it down to our toolbar. We set it to uh, switch lock. That way we could just go ahead and use our toolbar to lock it and to unlock it. So if we bring it back down, hit number three, and there we go. Now we're locked. Now another thing you need to keep in mind, I know there's a lot to these things and I'm gonna try to go through everything, hopefully I don't forget anything, is the difference in colors when it comes to merge blocks and connectors. Now in order to show you that I have uh, for the ships, I have a small merge block here and a small connector. Let's see if we can go ahead and bring that thing over. So right now, you'll notice that the merge block light, which is this little strip right here, is showing white. That means it has no connection pa uh, possibilities. Come on. Maybe I should try to steer this thing and not talk at the same time. All right, let's see if we can't get this thing connected. Or at least lined up so I can show you. God damn. Yeah, I have way too much thrust on this thing. There you go. Right there. Okay, maybe a little bit forward. 
There we go. Now, when I bring the merge block close to the other merge block, you'll notice that that light turns yellow. That's letting you know that there is a possibility to, a possibility to connect. And then when it actually does connect, it turns green. Now, in order to disconnect merge blocks, it's not like the connector, you can't just hit P. You actually have to turn the merge block off. So if we go and find our merge block, I have to figure out which one it is. Uh, this is, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna toggle on and off. We'll do all of them just until we figure out which one it is. Something I didn't think about when I was setting this whole thing up. All right, now when we turn the thing off, you'll notice that it turns red, letting you know that that either it's not getting any power or you have it turned off. Now with the connectors, the uh, colors are just a little bit different. The connector will have one more extra color. Let's go ahead and try to line this up. So just like, come on. Okay, that's good enough. So just like the merge block, Originally, it just has a white color on the band underneath. That band right there is white. When you get within range, it'll turn yellow. Do I have it lined up? There we go. And now when I lock it, it'll turn green. Let me know that I have it locked. But the connector has a different color. It still has the red letting you know it has no power. And it is shut off. But when I hit P again, you'll notice that the light turns blue. And we can pull away. But if I don't pull away fast enough, the light will turn yellow again. Now what that does is the connectors do have magnetism, which means right now there is a magnetic cool pull, but I have it turned down. All right, so connectors, whenever they come in range, they actually have a magnetic pull, so it will pull your ship in. The problem with that is it used to be so strong, the magnetic pull used to be so strong that it would pull your ship apart. So they added that few seconds of the blue light, which turns off the magnetism so you could pull away. Should give you plenty of time to go ahead and move your ship before the uh, magnet <laughs> before the mag that stuff before it pulls your ship apart all right another thing you need to keep in mind is the placement of connectors and merge blocks if I get out a block here and we put it right next to the connector on this slim side you'll notice that the block is red meaning that I cannot place it there but if I bring it to the bottom you'll see that I can now, if I go ahead and place a block here, you'll notice why. The connector is a little bit slimmer on that vertical axis, so there's a little bit of a gap. Now, that's very helpful when you when you have the connector on a piston and you have a block next to it, you could rotate it so that way it doesn't interfere with the piston. The merge block, on the other hand, you can place a block on any side of the merge block even on top one thing I didn't go over with the merge block is these prongs right here are telling you where you connect the merge blocks so a few other things now that we got to the basics and we got all that done a few other things we need to go over and the uses of merge blocks connectors are pretty much done basically all they are is to connect one grid to another and to pass resources through Merge blocks, on the other hand, because of their property to a hard connect one grid to another, they can do some other stuff. One of those things is to connect two pistons together. So let's say you want to build a piston door, a really big door for a hangar. But you put one piston on it and the door is way too heavy for one piston, so you need two pistons. The problem you'll have or more pistons actually. I built one one time that was like four pistons. But if we just place a block right here to try to connect these two pistons, you'll notice that they pulled away from one another. And there's a seam right here letting you know that these two pistons are not connected. They are at the bottom, but they are not connected at the heads. 
The reason for this is the piston head, along with rotors, are considered a separate grid. So these two blocks right here are one grid, and that block right there is a completely separate grid. Well, that's not going to help you when you're trying to build a door that requires those pistons to be connected. So there's a really old tool that you can use with merge blocks in order to connect those two piston heads and make them the same grid. I already have a setup right here. All you have to do is with one piston, just put the block that you're building with on top of it. Usually it would be a blast door, but we're just going to use these blocks as a reference because they actually have the seams that we can tell. So whatever block you're building with, then a merge block. And then when the uh, other piston, just make sure you build high enough to where this merge block sits on that merge block when the piston is fully retracted. So right here, same as the other side, your building block. Then your merge block would have been right here. And then this block is right where the second merge block needs to be. That way you don't blow the whole thing up. Now all I have to do is reverse that piston and we can watch those merge blocks connect. But we're still not done. We can get go ahead and get rid of those merge blocks by placing one block here and then get rid of them. Now we can build our doors and we have two pistons which give us a little bit more stability and strength. Also, you will notice that there is no seam letting us know that those two piston heads are on the same grid. But not only can you do that with pistons, but you could also do that with rotors. The only problem with rotors is they're a little bit more difficult, so you kind of have to build out from your system just a little bit. So that way you can get the correct angle and movement of the merge blocks. So right now all I have is I have two rotors with a conveyor system. Now the reason I need this is because I'm building a system over there, I'll show you guys here in a second, where I need these two rotors to be connected for stability. I need them to be stable on both sides. If I just did a rotor on one side, this whole thing would be wobbly and it would probably break apart. So as you can see, just like the piston, there is a little bit of a gap here. That's because, just like the piston, you have the rotor, and then you have a separate grid, which is the rotor head. And then, to connect these, all we have to do is turn that one piston, or that one rotor, on its grid, or, yeah, this grid, and turn that, leave that rotor alone, because we're just going to be connecting that merge block to that one. Let me see if I can find out which rotor that is, and we'll go ahead and connect them real quick. Alright, rotor, where are you? I think it's... Nope, you're that one. So all we need to do now is reverse it. And hopefully they connect together. And there we go. Now what we look for is to make sure that the conveyor lights are green. Letting us know that those two grids are connected by this conveyor right here. You'll also notice there is no longer a gap. Now I know what you're saying, it, there was a gap there before but there's not now, so what happened with the rotor? What happened to that gap? Well the rotors will pull just a little bit, it's not a big deal, it's not a problem, they won't blow up. But if you're putting this on a system where you need those rotors to rotate, I advise that you be cautious. Just be very careful when you're trying to do the system and you need those conveyors or those uh rotors to rotate now I know what you're asking what can you use this system for if you want it to rotate well you can do a system just for looks you can go ahead and grab a reactor let's do a large one it's not gonna look good right now because we use the uh, small grid but we have a large grid connector so what I can do is I can get rid of these and if we wanted to put a reactor right in the middle now, of course, a re large reactor, if I was using the small grid uh, conveyors, it would be much, much bigger than the conveyors, and you could actually turn that reactor, giving your base or your ship a little bit better look. Alright, so as I was saying earlier, the uh, merge block 
does not allow resources to pass through it. So if you want to use a merge block, which I'll get to a reason for that here in a second, you need the ability to pass resources for the uh, tunnel bore that we built. And I'll show you here in a second why. Actually, let's go ahead and go through it right now. So what I need is we have our stem. This is the pillar that will continue to build all the way up into the sky. What I need is I need resources to pass through this system, but then I also need it to pass through this system, which will be disconnected. This will be a separate grid. It will be moving up. This pillar is stationary. It's not going to move. So we can connect conveyors and uh, a system for crafting up resources. But I need the resources to get to this part which is going to be moving up as it builds. So later on what we'll have is connected to the top, we'll have welders that come to the middle and then there will be a projection which will, this will build with the welders as it moves up. So that's how we get the resources, but another thing that I'm gonna need is I need this to project on the pillar. Let me see if I can explain this. So what we're doing is as this goes up, this pillar will continue to get longer and longer and longer. And the way we're going to do that is with welders and projectors. Uh, projectors. Now the thing is, if I put a projector on this block or on this pillar, it is stationary. So I won't have any way to move the projection up as this system builds. So what I need is I need the projector on this system right here. The only thing is in order to build from one from one grid to the other because the welders will be on this grid and the uh, the projection will be on this grid. I need to connect those two grids temporarily with a merge block. Also, what I need to make sure is that the projector is on the same grid as the merge block. So what's going to happen is when this piston extends, that merge block is going to connect to that one, making that merge block part of this grid. And then we'll have the uh, projection, which is connected to the merge block, will also be a part of this grid. Also, the connector. It will be passing resources through. So that's something you need to keep in mind when you're building something like this is if you need resources and you need a projection that moves up, you have to have a merge block so that way it's the same grid. If it's not, you will not be able to build the projection. The projection will not build if it's a separate grid. But if you find a way of connecting it with the merge block, all of a sudden it does become the same grid and you can go ahead and build with it. I don't think I explained that very well. But it should give you an idea. Next episode, I think what we're going to do is we're going to get into projections. So that way I can go ahead and show you guys how that's going to work. But let's go ahead and go over to the system that I use the merge blocks and connectors for. Uh, well, mostly merge blocks. And that's this system right here. This is my small ship printer. Now, because of changes they made in the game, I kind of have to change the system just a little bit. Actually, I think I might also have to drop this this uh, row of conveyors. I might have to drop it down one block. So basically, what the reason you see this thing pulsing up and down is they nerfed the welders in the game. Now, as you can see, between that tip and that tip, there's a big gap. And when it does weld up a ship, it's not going to hit every piece of a small ship armor. There's going to be one line that won't be welded because of the strength of the welders. So what I needed to do is I needed a way to move those uh, welders so that way it will weld up those blocks. So far this is this is me experimenting to see what would work out and this is what I've come up with so far. I'll have to get it into survival and see how well it works out. But this is what I needed the merge blocks for. First I needed to connect these two pistons together so that way they could gyrate at the same time the way that they are. 
Then I needed to use the merge blocks to connect all these welders together. Now the thing is, is I need all those welders to get resources. I need them to have resources. So the resources are going to come through the piston and come to the welders. But there are times when I only use uh, one piston and it would be a lot easier. But I have noticed that sometimes these things get too heavy for the game. So I had to put on two pistons. And I needed them to be connected so that way uh, the welders will feed stuff through them. So here's the access point on the welders. So, uh, God, I can't talk today. So components will pass from one welder to the other. Also, I have a conveyor back here which will pass components from the top welders to the bottom. And then what will happen is this whole thing will come together to the middle and once it comes together to the middle it will turn on a projector which i do have back here and that projection will be showing the ship which will be right about here and as these things pull back to where they are right now it will build the ship so that's my small ship printer a really old system i built this thing long 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 time ago very long time ago and if i think about it Shit, I couldn't tell you how long ago it was. It was that long ago. But anyway, so one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be putting... Actually, you might be able to do it since we're using pistons. Yeah, I think I might be able to do it because the piston heads are have a little bit more of a gap. Let's see. Uh, one thing you don't want to be doing if I didn't have those pistons right there is... I wouldn't want to put the welders right on top of a solid block if I could get there we go no I think this would be fine now that I have it on the piston what another thing you need to keep in mind with the piston is the piston head is just a little little bit thicker so this piston is more than two blocks just like a little bit so I do have a little bit of a gap and I think that might be enough if I didn't have that on a piston right there like it is right now, what we would use are blast doors. Blast doors are a little bit thinner than an armor block. So if I turn it, you'll notice how it's a little bit shorter than the armor block. That's how I would build the floor to close this entire thing off. So this is what we're gonna be building in survival here pretty soon. Hopefully I can get the ep episode out pretty soon. Uh, but we'll see how that all works out. Yeah, so connectors and merge blocks, it, it's one of those things that are pretty handy. And it, it's good to know all the things you could do with them. Uh, one thing I don't think I went over was access points on the small uh, merge block and connector. The merge block doesn't have any access points, but the connector, the small connector, has a large access on the bottom and it has small access on all the sides. So, another thing I should have gone over that I forgot. I'm not perfect. I forget things sometimes. But, all that I went over today should give you some ideas of what you can do with merge blocks and connectors. They're actually really helpful for doing more than just connecting two grids. But, anyways, that's about all the time I have for this episode. I hope it helped you out. If not, I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments. And if it did, let me know about it in the comments. I'd like to know that I helped you out. But anyways, like I said, that's about all the time I have for this episode. So make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.